Oh my god, that looks amazing. So today on this episode of Mark and Things, we're gonna learn how to do carbon fiber overlaying over do forged carbon fiber overlaying. And I might be shouting because it's raining. I think today's the day that I'm gonna try a project that I've been wanting to do for a long time and last time I actually attempted to do this, I failed so miserably that I didn't even touch it for at least a year. It's been over a year, right? Yes. Yeah, and you might see in the title already what, what this project is, but let me tell you guys if you can't read. We're gonna be doing some forged carbon stuff for my Mercedes. In two weeks there's a show, it's actually gonna be the first show that my car's gonna be at. And I want there to be something done under the hood. So I'm gonna do some forged carbon parts, starting with the engine cover. And hopefully it goes well enough for me to do some other parts under the engine bay. But while I do the forged carbon stuff, Tian's gonna be doing some resin stuff as well. Make little license plate boats. Cause my Lancer is missing it since I took those boats off and put it on the Legend. And I've actually never seen custom license plate boats. There's a few, but I haven't seen some that I like, so. What do you have in mind? Maybe little hearts or maybe bananas. I mean, there's people that make some, but it's just, I have the resin at home and I might as well just try to make it. But first, we have to go to Starbucks. Exactly. It actually just started raining right when I pulled out the camera, which is great because I need to park my car outside while we work on the engine cover. No, we don't. At least get it further, cause I need I need room. I need room. We'll see when we come back what the weather looks like. We're probably gonna be out for at least an hour, anyways. We're gonna learn how to resin. Resurrect from the dead. Not yet, not yet, not oh, yet. Okay. I don't think they're ready for that yet. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we can't just Ooh, jump. Look, it's the new Mustang. We can't just jump from car related stuff to um bringing back the dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got Starbucks. Yes, we did. Today we end up just got a triple ice. Yeah. Ice triple espresso with three pumps of white mocha and cream. And I get a complicated order of three shots of espresso ristretto. Or two shots today, actually. No sugar, no nothing. Just straight death. We made it to Hobbert Lobbert. It's Hobby Lobby. Yeah, but it stands for Hobbert Lobbert. What are we getting from here? And this is what we got. Resin molds. Here you go. It's raining harder and we're gonna head to Walmart because Walmart has everything. We made it back from Walmart and it was actually not as hectic as I thought, especially for a Saturday. We found this piece of gold right here. 40 microfiber towels and they're not the tiny flimsy ones. And it was only 15 bucks. I don't know how Walmart stays in business. They have the lowest prices I've ever seen of anything in the world. Oh, hello. hello. We also got this because I heard you need to vacuum seal carbon fiber for it to like cure properly. I need to move my car. Maybe I'll just move it forward until it's like against the garage. Before we get started, I gotta take care of taking the engine cover off, which in this car is actually not that bad. I hurt a little bit close. Check this out. That was, that was so tough. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna clean it up, sand it, remove the emblem, and then we're gonna get started on the whole epoxy thing. I took the liberty to spray it with soap and water off of camera, and then just wipe it down to get most of the grime off. I wrapped this in vinyl once, and it looks kind of terrible, so. I'm gonna peel it off. I was just gonna pry at this thing, but then I realized that it's tiny little plastic rivets holding it in. So I'm gonna have to drill these little things out. The more I drill, the more scared I get of going all the way through. I heard a little crack, but I think it was just the tap. It actually came off pretty easily. I'm gonna put this somewhere safe. I'm gonna go over this whole thing with some 180 grit just to get it nice and gritty so that I have a lot of pores for the resin to sit into. I think that looks pretty good, I mean terrible. Now I'm just gonna wipe it with some rubbing alcohol. How is your project doing? Okay. I'm gonna use masking tape on a couple spots because I just don't want it to drip through these holes. And I don't want it to go below this line right here because I feel like the epoxy is just not gonna set right on this super vertical 
really long spot. I got this thing all masked up. I think I did a decent masking job. This is ready and prepped for the epoxy. Now I'm gonna be doing what she's pretty much doing, which is mixing the epoxy. I have this Dr. Crafty epoxy. It's supposed to be super clear. I'll leave the link for this in the description. Actually, I think I'm gonna leave the link for pretty much anything you need for this project in the description, just in case you wanna get the products that I use in this video. I was gonna use some random box to just level this out, but if you happen to have spray cans that are the same height, it actually does a pretty good job. You just wanna keep it level so that when the epoxy sets, it doesn't start dripping towards one side because it is a liquid. I'm gonna get to mixing the epoxy. Mine is actually volumetric. Volumetric means if you put 40 milliliters of the hardener, you need to put 40 milliliters of the resin. So I'm gonna start off with the resin and put 20 milliliters of it. That's actually a lot of resin. Now I'm gonna grab the hardener and put another 20 milliliters of that. Oh wow, that thing drips way faster. <laughs> Bonus tip, make sure to mix it for at least 30 seconds. I'm actually gonna put some black resin colorant just to make the base coat nice and dark, just in case I don't get carbon fiber everywhere. It'll still look dark. I'm gonna pour this on there and then use the brush to make sure I get an even coat on it. And then we're just gonna let it sit for a while. I know it doesn't look like much yet, but that's just the base coat. We're gonna have to wait about an hour to two hours for me to put the carbon fiber chunks all over it. So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to make a mode for my license plate boat. After these gets a little bit more tacky, I'm gonna stick the boat in there and then hopefully it works out. One hour later. It is very tacky. Check this out. Yeah. These are the carbon fiber pieces that I'm using. I'm gonna be sprinkling them all over this thing. This is actually gonna be using up a lot of this carbon fiber. Let me bring it closer. I already sprinkled some. Pretty much, I'm just gonna be doing this just to get maximum coverage. It's kind of like dusting with like powdered sugar. The trick I'm using to get the edges is kind of like when you make cake and you try to get sprinkles or something like that on the side. You put some in your hand and then you just press it. Don't be scared to waste because you're gonna be wasting a lot but it'll get you maximum coverage. You can't just sprinkle it on the edge like this or else it'll just fall over. I have most of it covered. I'm gonna kind of do like a dust, a dusting of it so that there's not big clumps. And then we're gonna put the epoxy on this thing. I mixed up some new epoxy and I'm about to just pour it all over that. And then use this guy right here to spread it all over. It has like little grooves. I forget what this tool is called, but it's pretty much made for resin. I think I got it fully covered. I'm not 100% sure it's supposed to look this murky or whatever. This is called peel ply or something along those lines. And I'm gonna put that on top and it's supposed to help with the curing process. Once I put this on top, we're gonna vacuum seal it and it should be ready to go for the next 24 hours. As a bag, I just used some generic brand from Walmart. I think you just put your vacuum to it and that's about it. I have the resin kind of going through this mat. I'm gonna open this up, put this inside of it and then vacuum seal it. The next day. I think the part is mostly dry. Tin stuff is still a little tacky, unfortunately. Today's goal is removing it from everything, sanding it as flat as I can and then we're gonna put new resin twice on it today. Here's what we got for now. I already opened it. This thing is stuck. Look, the peel ply became like clear. That's pretty interesting. It like sucked up the resin. Now I'm gonna remove this peel ply, which is really stuck to the piece, so I have to carefully do this. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I've never done something like this at all. So I'm kinda going with the flow, you know? All right, I'm gonna have to do this off camera because I need both hands. All right, here's the issue that I'm running into right now. On some of the edges, I guess not enough base was set, so it started lifting a little bit. I'm still trying to peel it off. It's, it's a little tricky, especially on the edges. Look, it looks like camo right now. When it's peeled, it looks kind of like it's covered in cloth now, which is funny because I just took off the cloth. I'm gonna clean up these edges a little bit all around with like an X-Acto and then get the sand in this part to make it as flat as I can. I'm just gonna go along all the edges where it's kind of like this or like this and pretty much cut it as flat as I can. Uh, the stray strands are not the biggest of deals because when I'm gonna put more resin on it, it's gonna flatten it out. But stuff like this that sticks out way further than the panel goes is 
gonna get a lot harder to cut if I start stacking resin on top. So I'm using this super high strength 3M adhesive spray to fix like the edges that peeled off. So I'm gonna spray it on both sides that need it. I need gloves. I'm gonna spray this part. Wait, hold up. It's fine that I got it on there because I'm gonna be sanding anyways. I'm gonna let it dry for about a minute before I do the full bonding process. Wow, look at that. I'm gonna let it rest for about an hour before I do the sanding because I really don't want it to lift up. One hour later. This thing seems pretty stuck. It, I already sanded a little bit over it. So I'm gonna be using some pretty coarse sandpaper like 80 and maybe some 180 just to get it as flat as possible because obviously you can see all these little wrinkles from the vacuum sealing. And I want to get as flat as possible before I put resin on it. Obviously, like, if it's not perfect, it's fine because the resin is going to level itself out. I did start off sanding by hand with some 180 grit, I believe, or 120 grit. And it wasn't going very fast. So I took out the power sander and went at it for at least 30 to 45 minutes. And you can see that I was just going back and forth, back and forth as much as I could. Just to get it as level as, I, as possible without destroying the carbon fiber itself. Unfortunately, I did sand off some of the carbon fiber and leaving the bare plastic underneath. So I'm gonna have to do like some touch-ups whenever I'm pouring the next layer of resin. Right here, I sanded a little bit too deep. It's black now. Same thing with around here. And a little spot somewhere up here, right here. And then the tops right here, which aren't a big deal because then it'll show the definition. I did take my time and clean it with water and alcohol and all that and wiped it down a couple times because there was a lot of dust just stuck on it and I want the resin to have the best contact it can. Now I'm gonna set up the station again. I got rid of the plastic because it was just drenched in water and dust and all that stuff. And I'm gonna put a new plastic on the ground and set up the cover for the next batch of resin. I had to go and take a shower because it was ridiculous. I had pieces of carbon fiber all over me and I was super itchy so I had to go take a shower, change everything because it was impossible for me to continue after I was done sanding. Now that it's clean and all, I poured some more of the clear resin on top and I'm just gonna use a brush to spread it evenly all across the top. You wanna make sure you get it in like every little crevice and it's okay if it dips because we're gonna put a second layer of this stuff on it in about two hours. And I'm not gonna be shy on it, you know? If I need to make more resin, I'll make more resin. I think I got pretty good coverage on this piece so far. I'm gonna use a torch so that I can get all the little bubbles on top just to make this as clear as possible. I almost forgot to try and touch up the little spots. I'm gonna grab this. And I'm just gonna get like a couple little flakes out of here. And I'm gonna sprinkle them right here. And I'm gonna put a little bit more resin on this thing. I think I'm done with the first layer. I'm gonna wait two hours to put a second layer on top of this thing. And then we'll be set for the night. Two hours later. There's some high spots compared to the rest of it. So I'm gonna make the second layer a little bit thicker than the last one. So I'm probably gonna use double the amount of product. This is a lot more than last time. It's like, I put a ton over here. Let's, let's brush it off before everything falls off the edge. You can see that the spot that I fixed over here looks great and so does this one. I'm gonna use the torch again to get rid of the little bubbles on top. Man, oh man, that thing is looking good. And it's not even done. There's a lot of finishing touches left, but I need to let that thing rest for at least 24 hours to cure. Maybe I'll do a little longer, we'll see, but I need to get some clear coat for it. And I really wanna do that top quality clear coat. So I need to get some 2K clear coat from Summit Racing, cause the one off Amazon is not gonna come in for at least a week. And I don't wanna wait that long. So I might be taking my car out to Summit Racing at some point this week. Man, I need to wash my car. Look how dirty it is. I'm gonna go back upstairs and probably get some sleep. It's, it's like 1 a.m. now. Two days later. Man, oh man, this thing is... Oh jeez. This thing is looking good. Don't worry about the little waves on it. It's gonna get sanded flat, okay? But man, look at that. Whew. I'm gonna be using some 120 grit sandpaper on that little sander thing and just go over the whole surface to get it as evenly flat as possible so I can put the last layer of resin on there. I got it pretty flat compared to what it was before. I think the last coat is gonna get all these tiny little imperfections 
pretty much filled out. And right now I'm using rubbing alcohol on this towel just to get most of the dust off. I'm gonna do it a couple of times because you can see that it's picking up and I'm sure after a while it's not gonna pick up all of it. Looks good though, look at that matte finish. I'm gonna put my final coat of resin, kind of like I did in the rest of this video. It's the same mix, I think it's the same amount I put on the big coat. I'm gonna use a fresh new brush to spread it. I'm trying to get all the low spots covered. On this last coat, I'm doing more sculpting with the brush than I did on the other coats because when it dries, I don't want it to be super thick in areas that have curves, like this circle right here and then these lines on the side. So I'm trying to get all the extra kind of out of the way. The back is not the prettiest. Luckily, it'll stay hidden forever. This is super vertical, so it has a lot of texture in my opinion. I think we're good. Gonna use the torch real quick just to get rid of all the bubbles. Look at how beautiful that is. It looks done. I mean, obviously it's not, but it looks done. Only 24 hours or so, and I will be able to sand it and clear coat it and show you guys the final result. I think it's gonna look amazing, especially since it's a custom piece that nobody else is gonna have. And I love the look of forged carbon. I'll be right back. The next day. Guys, tonight's the last night of finishing this thing up. It is dry. It's been a little over 24 hours. I can touch it. And I'm gonna sand it with some really fine sandpaper just to get rid of little dimples on it. Nothing, nothing crazy. Obviously, it leaked on the edges a little bit, so I'm gonna sand that down. And then we'll be ready for 2K clear coat. It sucks that I'm gonna have to waste this entire can just for that, but it only lasts two days, I believe. So unless I find something else I wanna clear coat in the next two days, I'm throwing the rest of this away. I'm gonna wet sand this thing with some fine 600 grit sandpaper. That took me about another 30 minutes or so, but I really focused on the edges to make them as straight as possible. Also, I made the main front part of it as flat as I can. Look at those reflections, they're pretty good. I'm gonna clean this up with rubbing alcohol and then get it ready for paint. I have this guy hanging and ready to clear with the 2K clear. If you guys have never seen how this works, it's pretty much a two component clear. When you take the lid off, there's this little red thing inside of the lid. You use this to push this at the bottom of the can to pretty much activate the clear coat. And then push with your palm. That's it. It doesn't really make a noise or anything. Now we're gonna shake it for longer than you would a regular can. I really need to wear protection for the spray paint because it has really tiny particles compared to regular spray cans. So I have this mask that should help me a lot. I sound like Bane. That's what it looks like after five coats. I'm gonna let it cure for a few hours and then I'll be back. I think it's done. It looks great. I know I'm hiding it right now, but check this out. Look at that. That looks awesome. Let's test fit it on the car. Oh my God, that looks amazing. Guys, I think I outdone myself. What do y'all think? Look at that. I really wanna do those pieces right there, but I don't know about that. I think I need an intake. What do y'all think? But look at that. Ooh. I'm really happy with the results. It is not 100% done. I still need to epoxy the emblem on, but before that, tomorrow I'll probably be cutting and buffing the engine cover so that I can get it as glossy as I can. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna go upstairs and edit this video now.